Good morning, modern steaders. This morning we're going to be talking about homesteading hurdles. And our big homesteading hurdle that we're going to be talking about in today's video is gardening. And what style gardening is the best for you that you can grow the most food with the least amount of energy. Stay tuned. But that's our big homestead hurdle that I'm working through because we need to grow some beautiful produce next year. How do I fill up and stock our new root cellar? And we want to be able to overflow our kitchen and just be so busy with putting up food. But I don't want to put a lot of work in to weeding all the time. I hate weeding. One of our big homesteading hurdles that we're facing right now that I've been thinking a lot about is gardening. We've had great success with gardening in the past at our other homestead sites. Now that we're here at Lumna Acres, we need to spend more time focusing on growing our own gardens. The first year we were here, we spent most of our energy on building our house. We didn't get any livestock or chickens. We didn't do any gardening that year. The second growing season we were here, we focused on our egg layers, turkeys, meat birds, and we raised two pigs. We didn't do any gardening that year. Last year, which would have been our third growing season here, we've put in our raised bed gardens. We didn't do turkeys. We did our egg layers. We did a lot more meat birds. We doubled our meat bird production. And we doubled our pigs we've been raising, which is awesome. The gardens did pretty good. Not super. But we don't have the best soil here, and we knew that. So that's our big homesteading hurdle for this coming season is we want to be able to grow a lot more of our own produce here. So last year we had a lot of our meat animals I'll say that we raised and we spent a lot of time on building what we're in right now, our outdoor kitchen. We built New York City. We did our root cellar. We just finished that project up and I'm we, the area where the pigs are in, we cleared that and did a lot of chipping. There's quite a few other projects that we did. But those are all done. And now with like our outdoor kitchen, it's going to make us more productive with our gardens. Our root cellar will have a place to store all of our abundance. And we don't have to worry about it spoiling and going bad on us. Now we need to focus on growing the produce. Before I get too much into what style of gardening and how we want to grow all of our gardening soil, I want to touch on the other two places we lived and what kind of soil we had there and what kind of gardening we did there. The first place we lived, we had a huge garden and we were told that the area we put our garden is the spot that the previous generations had their gardens for years and they had chickens and they had awesome compost and manure going in there, but we didn't know it at the time. And we had really good loomy soil. No rocks, just black gold for soil. And we had good gardens there. I won't say amazing, but we had good gardens. We did traditional gardening there. When we first started gardening, that's what we knew how to do, was traditional gardening. So we rode a tilled. We planted seeds. We watered. We weeded. We watered. We weeded. That got old after a while. I started doing some research and just different things. Like, there's got to be a better way. So just looking and reading and looking at nature. and So, lo and behold, I started coming up with these things. You can mulch your garden with, they were talking about different like mulches, like straw. I was looking at that and I'm like, straw is like 9 or $10 a bale. I don't got that kind of money. So I was looking around, we had wood chips, we had grass clippings, we had leaves. So I started mulching around. We started with our beets and our carrots and our onions. We started mulching around those plants with different things, pine needles, leaves, grass clippings, and it worked amazing. If a weed popped up, just pull the weed out, easy peasy, and I wouldn't throw it away. I was gonna say I'd throw it away, I wouldn't. i just leave it right in the center of the aisle and turn that into more mulch. It worked awesome. It wasn't like a deep layer mulch, it was just enough to suppress the weeds. I still had to do a lot of watering. The main aisles, I rototilled. Every year we had to rototill our garden. But mulch in the garden was awesome. Fast forward, we moved to our next area. 
And before that, I had been reading about back to eating gardening, and I couldn't find wood chips. But I was on Craigslist the winter before I wanted to plant the gardens, and I found a local person where we were. There was a lot of horses. So there was a local person that was going around all the big high-end horse barns, and he was getting the manure, cleaning it out, and he was composting it. We got, so we got half-composted horse manure. It worked awesome. I think we either got six truckloads or ten truckloads of manure. I mean, we did two gardens, and when he dumped it and I leveled it out, we must have had 12 inches to 18 inches of manure, compost, whatever you want to call it. The first year we planted in that, we had a good garden. It was pretty darn good. We got some amazing food out of it. Hardly ever had to water. I will say that, and that was amazing. When I went out and turned the soil for the second season, it was like black gold. It was down to half the thickness, so it had composted even more. The soil underneath it was nice and moist. It was like black gold. So the second season we planted in it, we never had to do any watering, we never did any weeding, or if we did, we'd pull one weed, pull it up, and it was easy. And I'll put a picture in, hopefully right here, I gotta find the picture, Olivia was tiny. And I have zucchini plants, they were from like hair to hair tall, our corn was massive. We got so much good plants out of that, it's not even funny. The only thing we didn't get a lot out of, and we didn't have luck with, that was potatoes. It was too rich in nitrogen, so the potatoes, the bushes were growing amazingly and nice and green, but we weren't getting any potatoes. Come to find out it's because there was too much nitrogen in the soil. And then we kept composting throughout the time, and you can compost really fast. So through all those methods, what I learned was, and what I, we're going to be doing here this season for growing our own garden, is is the back to Eden garden style, which is wood chips. But I don't want to say that doesn't work, but just using fresh wood chips, you're not going to have much success. So we're not going to go there. But what I'm going to go into is what we're going to be doing for gardening, what I found that works the best for us, compost gardening. Just growing compost. Compost whatever you can. If you have grass clippings, use grass clippings. If you have hay, use hay. If you have leaves, use leaves. If you can mulch up your leaves and mow over them, use them. If you can't, use them. They'll just take longer to compost. If you're in an urban area and you live in an area that has lots of trees, people rake up their leaves, they put them in paper bags for you on the side of the road, free mulch, go pick it up. It works amazing. We've done that plenty before. We don't have that up here. What we do have is we have our animals that like to use litters. So I use hay for two reasons. Hay has seeds in it, which isn't good for compost, but it's good for the animals. The animals will scratch through the hay and they want to eat out of it. Then they're going to scratch through it more, they're going to manure it, they're going to keep turning it, and then we can take that hay and we can turn it into compost for our garden. So we're getting a feed source out of our hay, we're getting a bedding out of our hay, and then we're getting compost to feed our soil out of the hay. I think I'm rambling on here a little bit, but my point is, is our homesteading hurdle this coming year is gardening. We need to get really good garden soil. And the way we're gonna do that is with deep bedding. Not for our animals, but deep bedding for our gardens. We need to build the soil, we want to build it fast. So we're going to do that through composting. We're not doing wood chips or just wood chips. We have a huge wood chip pile that we were able to get. I mean, this will, this is two, it's two years old now. And we got that over there. We just want to let that compost and rot. And then we'll be able to use that. But you don't need to go and spend a lot of money to get a great garden. Find out what's abundant in your area and use that for your deep bedding. More on point for today's topic is gardening and time. So gardening time and money all go together. If you want to save money you don't need to go and buy some fancy compost. Buy what's readily available in your area. Everybody's area is different which is fine. We've lived in different areas 
then each area had what was more abundant than the other. If you have horses in your area, and they're like riding horses, their manure to them, they think of that as a waste, and oh, I gotta get rid of this. Well, for us, that is, ooh, black gold. So you can get the comp, you can get their manure and compost it for free. They might even pay you to haul it off. There's things like that all over. Everybody's area is different. So that's the money aspect of it. If you can get great compost or make your great compost for growing in your gardens, you're going to save huge money. And if you don't have enough time for gardening, if that's what your lack is, is time. If you mulch your garden or do deep compost, so say you have the money, but you don't have the time. Go out and buy in your area great compost and do what we did at Mass. We had 18 inches of compost. We didn't have to water and we didn't have to weed. If we weeded, it took us 10 minutes after work, if that. And we had huge gardens. The most time we spent in our gardens was planting and harvesting. And I'm not lying, there. that worked awesome. We didn't water it, we didn't do anything. I loved it because when we were in Mass, there was watering vans. So we had this huge garden that was growing abundantly, and I didn't water it. So if you lack the time, go out and buy your compost if you have the money. If you have time, but you don't have the money, go and make your own compost. And then later on, you'll have awesome compost that you made, but next year, you'll have awesome compost in your garden, and you won't be spending any time gardening. So it's all a give and take. What do you have, what you don't have, what your needs are. But it's an investment because the years after, you're going to be able to reap your rewards. Like we spent a lot of time this year with our animals. And right now we're reaping the reward and we're eating amazingly right now. But we built our buildings. We got our outdoor kitchen that we're in right here. Next year we'll be able to reap the benefits of the outdoor kitchen. We already had a pig harvesting class in here, which was amazing. This April, we're going to be doing another pig harvesting class in here. Well, it's not, I shouldn't call it a pig harvesting class. It's going to be more of a farm to table pig class. We're going to have half the pigs out on this very table, and we're going to be learning how do we cut them up. All right, now we're going to cut some meat. What do we do with this beautiful meat? Do we pan fry it? Do we make sausage with it? Do we make terrinis with it? We make a beautiful head cheese, sausage, hot dogs, bologna, shh, I'm giving away too much. We're going to have fun. I'm looking forward to April's farm to table pig class. All right, I'm off topic again. But we're reaping the rewards from putting in all this time and energy into our homestead. The outdoor kitchen, we're not just going to be doing pig farm to table classes, but we're going to be harvesting our gardens abundance in here and we'll be cleaning it and we can can it and we can prep it in the sink and then we got the root cellar to store it all in. Oh, it makes me excited just thinking about it. I can't wait for our next growing season. I'm excited. We built New York City last spring. That was our first project we built. We've been reaping the rewards of that. We can move our animals around easy. But it's a give and a take. You're giving away some of your time, some of your money to put it into infrastructure. If your homestead hurdle is gardening and you don't think you have the time or the money for gardening, that's not an excuse. There's plenty of ways to do it. You just gotta research for your area, but use what you have readily available for you, whether it's grass clippings, whether it's leaves, whether it's pine needles. We've had an awesome success with pine needles. Wood ash, just start researching in your area what you can get for carbon. That's the best way to look at it. You're looking for carbon, whether it's peanut hulls, whether it's waste from your grocery store that they see, if it's you know vegetables, whatever. Compost, whatever you can get your hands on and turn it into the best black gold you can get. That'll pay for itself in the years to come. Good afternoon, ladies. You enjoying your winter shelter? You seem nice and warm. You know, we got like 
five to ten inches of snow coming tonight. Can you handle it? I'll get you some more hay. But that's our big homestead hurdle that I'm working through because we need to grow some beautiful produce next year. How do I fill up and stock our new root cellar? And we wanna be able to overflow our kitchen and just be so busy with putting up food. But I don't wanna put a lot of work in to weeding all the time. I hate weeding. Leave it in the comments down below and let me know what your big homesteading hurdles are. And we'll talk about it, we'll discuss it, and we'll get through it together. We're gonna conquer our homesteading dreams together. Thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing, and we'll see you right back here tomorrow at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Bye.